Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we're going to be doing part two today of the Seiko 6139, uh, 6005 I think it is. Uh, can't remember now, whatever I said in the last video. Um, just check the watch. Yes, the 6139 6005. So we're going to be going through the assembly procedure today. Uh, a couple of things I've done to get prepared. Um, the watch is, is ready to go. Um, it's been cleaned in the cleaner. Um, everything's been, been uh, taken care of accordingly. Uh, so now we're going to be assembling and lubricating uh, each section as we go. So the mainspring has been thoroughly cleaned. Um, it's been wound uh, back into a little mainspring disc. Um, I always like to do this from the mainspring winder. I transfer it to the disc and then put it into the um, into the, the, the thing there. Um, my escapement has been pre-epilammed. Um, uh, the fixer drop or epilam, um, it's, it's uh, been applied to that uh, previously, so we don't have to um, do that on camera. The reason we do that is because it's... Uh, it's a special formula that ensures that lubricant stays where it is. Make sure it's, it ensures that lubricant doesn't spread. Um, and we really don't want lubricant spreading on our escape. We don't want lubricant spreading anywhere, but we particularly don't want it on our escapement uh, to be on the tops of our pallet stones or on the tops of our teeth. So it, uh, it just keeps everything uh, where it should be. So I've inspected the parts. Um, everything looks good. And we're ready to basically get assembling at this point. So that's uh, what I wanted to take you guys through, the assembly of a 6139. So let's get started. So we're going to start with our barrel. And now I've checked the barrel for various shakes, and we are good. So there's no need to, um, to go through and, and check that again. We'll just grab our armor there. There's a lot of talk about barrels, mainsprings, um, whether we should be lubricating the spring itself um, or whether we should be putting lubricant in the barrel. There is where that happens. I have gone through various uh, uh, thoughts and opinions about this. I'm going to put a very small amount of lubricant uh, on the barrel walls itself. Not a lot, just a little bit, um, because I don't think it's particularly necessary. The important part is the braking grease uh, that goes into the barrel, which is the Kluber 125, uh, which is what I use, Kluber 125 which is a very sticky, thick, uh, black grease here that we will put on the barrel walls. And as usual, we want it on the wall. We don't want it on little piece of hair there piece of metal. We don't want it on the barrel itself, on the base of the barrel. Because that is not what it's designed for. And all too often I see this stuff. on the bottom of barrels. So I like to put a smallish amount. Well, not a too, not too small of an amount. It needs to be enough. And I like to put it all the way around. It's not fun stuff to work with, to be honest, because it really likes to leave a trace. It's so sticky um, and it really gets everywhere, this stuff. So you do have to be
you have to be pretty methodical and pretty careful with it. When you apply it, because if you do get it on the on the drum itself, on the base of it, whew, it is a pain to get off. Okay, that would be sufficient. So, I'm gonna put a very small amount of HP 1300 in our barrel, just to let that spread through. Now we make sure our mainspring is aligned correctly. We put that in. And we press our mainspring in like so. Now we can get ready. Put it in our barrel holder. And we want to lubricate where our arbor's going in. On the both sections. That's important because that's what receives uh, that's what is rotating when the watch is running. Um, the barrel arbor is moving inside the barrel. And then we want to lubricate there too. Again, on all seating surfaces, uh, we can. One thing we forgot to do. drop like we spoke about and that stuff will work its way through close up our barrel and check our end shake side shake we want to have end shake we want to make sure that that arbor is free to move inside the barrel because if it binds we're going to have amplitude issues and then we want to check our side shake okay we are good put the barrel to one side now what we want to do is we want to lubricate our capstones and our balance jewels. It's important to do that at this point because we want to get our balance jewels in. Even though the balance is going to be the last thing that we put in the watch, we want to get them out because we want to we want to uh, do this because we need to see um, if our balance is flat and concentric. And then if we need to make adjustments, we can make balance adjustments, balance spring adjustments. Now, it's easiest to do this when everything else is off the watch because we can get angles. We can just not see from one side like we would be able to uh, if the rest of the watch was in place. We can come from through the barrel, we can come from here, and we can see our balance from all angles. So it's really important um, to install our jewels and balance at this point. Um, when we're dismantling the watch, obviously it doesn't matter. It can come out in any order whatsoever. Uh, but that is not the case. Um, when we, uh, when we are doing that. Now, the reason 
I cannot find it is because I forgot to remove it. So let's do that now and we'll have to clean that. Unbelievably, it's clean, been cleaned remarkably well. So I'm just gonna go off camera and clean it again just to make sure everything's good. Okay, so we're all good. It's all cleaned up nicely. That's probably something that I've honestly never done except for the time I do it on camera, of course. But uh, anyway, we are human and mistakes happen. All right, let's uh, let's get started. There's a little hair on there. Okay, got that off. Now I like to. I don't use an automatic oiler. Some people use an automatic oiler. I like to lubricate these. I like to lubricate the capstone and once we have a nice I'm hoping you a nice little blob of oil on there probably put a little more than that to be honest too much and remember it is growing in height too so that looks about right and then we get our chaton or diafix whatever you want to call it and we put that on top and we see it's tough to tell but inside we have a nice ring we don't want the oil to separate we want it to stay as a nice ring because if it stays as a nice ring we know we have it in the right spot and it's not going to creep elsewhere so let's do the other one And a nice ring. Okay, so now we drop our drop our jewel in, and I like to pick these up with some rotico because they can be a bit of a pain. To pick up and I find I find it quite difficult on camera because I don't have a setup where I can get my head under there nicely and normally I would work over my work but right now I'm working across it and it kind of makes life difficult but uh any little marks on there i just get off with a bit of rotico i know people are against rotico but, and people say oh factories don't use it watch companies don't use it lies absolute lies watch companies use rotico more than anyone that i've ever encountered in my life i've seen i've toured the rolex factory with new watches and seen them cleaning dials with rotico so don't tell me watch companies don't use Rotico. It's important to make sure Rotico is clean um, if you're gonna use it. Okay. 
we get two arms in, we spin, and we get a third in, and then we move it around to a safe distance. Just like that. Okay, I don't do clean that with every part. It's a non-bearing surface, so it's not a big deal. So I always uh, dab Rodico on there. But um, yeah, anyway. Okay, so now we can check the balance. We want to make sure that the balance spring is concentric. So our coils are evenly spaced this way. We want to make sure our balance spring is flat. And we want to make sure that it's breathing evenly between the curb pins, which are the sections that tell us if it's keeping time or the, the, the regulate, sorry, keeping time. So I just need to go in with it 20 times. When our balance is at rest like this, when our balance is at rest like this, we want it to be sitting between the two pins. Now we want that gap to be minimal between the two to the two uh, banking pins, or uh, sorry, the two curb pins. The reason we want it to be minimal is because um, if we have a large gap, when the watch is in the vertical position, we get a big drop in amplitude. So we really need to make sure that that gap is really quite minimal. Um, and also we don't want the balance spring resting between one uh, and we don't want it breathing inaccurately. For instance, if we have our pins like so, and we have our balance spring, we want it to be resting in the center so that once we start vibrating our spring, our balance is moving like this. What you'll see is if it's over to one side, it'll beat like this. We don't want it to, we want it to beat evenly like so. So it needs to be in the middle. Obviously this gap is exaggerated. We want our gap to be as small as possible without it binding, but we want to have play. So that's how uh, our balance spring works. So it's at this point we would make any adjustments that need making because uh, everything is clean and we know that everything is working um, correctly. So in this situation, we actually don't need to make any adjustments because this watch hasn't been messed around with. Really, the only time you have to make adjustments to a balance spring is when someone's been in there and messing about with the spring, basically. Um, so this watch is pretty good. Um, so we don't need to mess about with our balance or spring. Check our end shake. And we look good. So it's important. We've already checked all this stuff, but it's really important to check again because as it's going together, you just wanna make sure that everything's correct because you don't wanna to have to lubricate something and come back to it because that's a pain because if you have to take everything apart or whatever it may be. So let's put our balance to one side. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna to check to see that our end shake is good for our barrel. You can see that we have upgraded our main plate. There is now a jewel in the main plate and there is a jewel in our barrel and train wheel bridge. So now let's make sure that our end shakes are good. Now we wanna run this dry, because again, we don't wanna lubricate something. I'm just gonna pick out my screws here. We don't want to lubricate something and um, have it not be correct. I'm also going to get ready our train wheel, our center wheel screw, um, which is the center wheel screw, the center wheel bridge screw, I should say. That is our click, click spring, click screw. Um, it's similar size to our train bridge screws, uh, but it's a narrower head as a smaller diameter. So we're going to keep that to the side because we're going to need that. Um, our hmm. okay, this is our center wheel bridge screw. 
It is a rough finished screw. It is not polished. It is just a matte finish uh, on there. And it's not to be confused with this screw, which also has a matte finish, but that is the screw for our setting lever spring. Oh. There, those two screws are the same um, in the watch and they are both um, a uh, rough finished screw or a non-polished screw. So those we keep aside because we don't wanna get them mixed up and we wanna make sure we put the correct center wheel screw in um, when we put that when we put that center wheel bridge in. So I'm gonna actually also just get all that ready because that is gonna go in next. So let's put our barrel in, let's put our bridge on. Now it's really important that we put our screws in, all our screws, because this tells us um, our end shake is so important. So I've already put our screws in and we're binding. So we're gonna need to adjust that end shake. And I'm gonna have a look. And I'm actually going to go down a little in the plate because I pressed it in with a with a particular uh, stake pusher. Pusher, that's the word I'm looking for. I pushed it in with a particular pusher, but I'm going to push it in a little lower because the pusher was big and it pushes it flush, but it doesn't always sit completely flush. So we want to pick our correct... Uh, Correct pushes. And everything's clean. Just clean off our pusher to make sure it's all good. Okay, so that's as far as I wanna push uh, the jewel in the plate. So let's check again. And if we have to push any further, well, we'll take it from the bridge. We'll push it out in the bridge. See the freedom? We're looking good. Okay, so end shake is minimal. but it's there. But I've got one screw out still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come 
a little bit I'm gonna come a little bit up in the plate because I find that whilst it's free at this point once the automatic block goes on once everything else goes on things can change so I like to keep it a little bigger just to be safe so you're not coming back um, and, and dealing with any issues there. So, Because once everything's lubricated, once everything's in place, we don't want to have the thing binding. And we're like, oh, it's binding, what's wrong? And it's the, 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 the issue is the... Um, is the uh, Barrel, and the barrel's binding, and that's why we're having a lot of that. Uh, wouldn't have an amplitude loss, but uh, you know the watch isn't winding properly; it's not working efficiently. Uh, that could certainly be a reason uh, that that would be the case. So I'm just gonna ever so slightly drop out. Sorry, there was something on the jewel there. I just wanted to get off. Okay. Now let's check our... Let's check our barrel. That's good. And then we can check on the side and we can see that our gap is, is nice and our gap is nice and even. Okay. Perfect. Nice and tight. So now we can remove Plate. And we can actually get to work. So what do we want to do? Well, first things first, center wheel. We want to lubricate these pivots with a drop of HP 1300. On the bottom. And the top. And we want to drop that in place. Now, before we put any of the bridges on, I like to get the barrel. And lubricate the barrel. Again, HP 1300, so we have smooth, efficient winding. Now lubricating on the actual piece before we, instead of lubricating the jewels is always a better option. We get a much cleaner, neater lubrication. And now we have our center wheel screw in place. And we just double check our end shake again. Okay. Next we want to get the rest of our gear train. And we want to put our third wheel in place. 
and we want to put our escape wheel in place. And then next we want to put our chronograph wheel in place, but we want to lubricate that first. So we want to press down, holding the pinion ever so gently. We want to press down. And we want lubrication to run up inside that shaft. And we achieve this with capillary reaction. Then we want to lubricate the bearing surface through our center wheel. And we can put our chronograph wheel in place. Now we've already lubricated our top pivot of our barrel or our top uh, bearing of our barrel arbor. So we can go ahead and put the train wheel bridge onto the watch. Now to get everything in place, we tap the side of the movement holder. And we see that everything has naturally found where it needs to sit. It's a good little trick. I was actually talking to a watchmaker the other day and I told him this trick and he did it and he just couldn't believe it. He said it changed his life. Well, that's a bit dramatic, but uh, it's a really, really neat little trick. Okay, so every time we screw something down, we check. I recommend if you're doing this yourself, hold the bridge down so you know that everything's seated. If you trust yourself, it's fine. Otherwise, make sure you hold that bridge down because you can come unstuck. Okay, once all the screws are in loose, we can go around. and tighten them up like so. Okay, at this point we can put our click, click spring. It's really only a click at this point because Seiko don't use a click and a spring, it's one piece and it works really well to be completely honest. There's not really any reason for it to be two components. If one component does the job. But aesthetically speaking, um, some Swiss made clicks, uh, depending on what they are, they can be very beautiful. A click is a great thing to, to show off and finish um, to a high standard. So that's uh, that would have a a bearing on the matter. Okay, so now we put in our ratchet wheel screw. And turn it like so. Now let's orient all our levers properly. Okay. What we need to do now is we need to lubricate our train wheel pivots. On this side. Not too much, not too little, but sufficient. And now we can put our 
bridge in place. Our minute wheel. Minute recording wheel bridge, I should say. And we'll find the correct corresponding screw. Two of those screws that are similar. I believe. And we'll just find there we go. It's two of the rough finish. Sometimes there's some that are polished, that's what I was looking for. But uh, in this case, it's two of the uh, two of the non fancies. So we put our bridge in place, and then we put our screw in place. Okay. Now we can put our column wheel in place. And we need our little center column wheel bushing. And let's make sure that we get, uh... oh, don't do that. Make sure we get the screw while we're at it. Lubricate this as we go. And then we want to lubricate the teeth and the pillars. I like to do a small amount on every kind of, every third tooth, I would say. A small amount on every third tooth. And then probably on three pillars. I would say is sufficient. And the technical manual doesn't say to do this, but I like to put a small drop of grease on the screw. Hey, technical manuals aren't infallible. Now we can lubricate our mechanisms.
look at our mechanisms as we go. spots that I like to get done ahead of time. Okay. Now we can continue going with the rest of the watch. And the assembly of chronograph mechanism. Important to lubricate between the two levers here. I'm just going to do this off camera because it's uh, a little difficult to do on camera. I'm going to make sure we get our lubricant in there with those two levers work against each other. Okay. And then we have our screw that holds everything in place. Okay, we can now fit our Fit and lubricate our reset hammer. Sorry guys, there's a couple of spots here where I've really got to get in tight. And I'm just not able to do that yet with my current camera set. I will get there, I promise. 
right, we'll get there. Okay. So at this point, we can put our intermediate minute wheel in place. And we can put our In a recording wheel in place. And now we want to fit our springs. Make sure we've got everything at this point. Okay, have we done everything? Uh, yes, it appears we have. So now let's fit the big, the big one, the big mother. Now this, you definitely want to hold down. And we now want to fit our hammer spring in place. For this, I like to use two tweezers generally. So we fit our hammer spring in place like so. it round and bring it in just like that now check have we done everything Have we lubricated everything we should have? It seems like we have. So we can now fit, actually there's one more spot. It's not on the, uh, it's not on the technical document, but I think lubricant should go there. It's just where this spring moves back and forth. I just feel like a very small amount of lubricant should go there to keep everything running smoothly. Okay, now we can fit our bridge. train wheels moving so we are good we can now fit our screws Fit our screws like so. 
And look for the third one. Again, check our train wheels. We're good. And then lubricate the various wheels and pivots. That need it. Put our jumper into place. And last thing is we need to lubricate our lever here. for a reset and then we can put that in place now we check our functions push them around so we spread that lubricant we just want to spread that lubricant on our pillar wheel And we want to reset. Make sure our resets. No reset. Reset. Everything appears to be working as it should. All right, so at this point, we can fit our pallet fork. Um, now, there are four screws in this watch that are very similar. We have two for our pallet bridge, and we have two for our automatic device. Now, the two thicker screws need to go into our pallet bridge, and that is these two here. If we use the thinner screws, the thinner screws will fit in the pallet bridge, but the thicker screws will not fit in the automatic bridge. But, um, yeah, so we need to make sure that we use the thicker screws, otherwise they will bind um, in, the, in the bridge. So, let's go ahead and fit our pallet fork. Our pallet bridge. Tap to secure the pivots. And... Oh. Screw the screws in. Secure it, check our intake. Okay, we're good. And at this point, we can wind the watch and give it power. Now, we want to lubricate our escapement. But before we do that, we want to put lubricant on our pivots. We put them on our bridge side, but we haven't put them on our dial side. Escape wheel. Third wheel, we've already lubricated our center wheel, but we do not lubricate our pallet pivots. That's just something that doesn't get lubricated. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to go to the microscope and 
I'm gonna go lubricate the escapement over at the microscope. So I will do that and come back. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show that uh, on camera. Now, the reason I lubricate the escapement at the microscope is because this is a difficult escapement to get over. Um, it's tough to be able to see and get in there because you've got a small um, uh, space in which to lubricate the exit stone. You can't lubricate the entry stone, um, lubricate the exit stone here. So I like to just do it uh, um, at the escapement. Um, I like to generally lubricate most uh, watch escapements at the microscope. I just find it easier. Um, so now we have our moment of truth. We can actually fit our balance and we can see if our watch will run. Well, would you look at that? We have life. I must have some idea of what I'm doing. Don't let the running watch fool you. Now, I'm going to demagnetize the movement. So here we are at the demagnetizer. I use the Elma anti-mag. It's a one press solution. Um, uh, I know that there are others on the market that, that pull through or pull up, uh, perhaps the cheaper ones. Uh, you can buy on Amazon or eBay, I like that. Um, but uh, there are also expensive uh, Swiss machines or Swiss demagnetizers that are like that, but I prefer the one touch Elma anti-mag. Um, so I, uh, always like to make sure the surface is clean. I put the watch like so, and we press the button. Press it again, and that's it. We are magnetized, uh, demagnetized, sorry. Okay, so now we can let the watch settle in. Um, let the lubricant start to make its way around uh, and to get settled uh, before we check our, check our timing results. So what we'll do now is we'll flip the movement over and We'll get started on assembling uh, the calendar work. So what we'll do first is we shall put on our cannon pinion as our first job. Now we'll assemble our hand setting work. A lot of technical guides, not for this watch, but a lot of technical guides will tell you that uh, to use an oil, a thick oil, for winding and setting work. I'm of the opinion that when you have metal to metal contact, a grease is always better that's the old Rolex watchmaker in me. Um, we would always use grease on metal to metal areas um, as the technical guides indicate, whereas ETA technical guides, for instance, always tell you to use a thick oil. Um, so I'm a stickler for the old Rolex technical guide and uh, Old habits die hard, as they say, and I like to use uh, oil. I like to use grease, sorry, um, for any metal-to-metal -metal situations, I guess you could call them. So 
That is what I do here. Now remember those two rough screws we talked about earlier? Non-polished, I should say. They're not rough. That's where we use these. We use these in our setting lever spring or cover plate, as it's called. Actually, what does Seiko call this thing? I don't even know. Setting lever spring is what they call it. Well, good, because I don't like when it's called a cover plate. I like it being called a setting lever spring. <laughs> lubricate in there. And then we can lubricate and fit our winding stem. We want to make sure that we get on the shaft here, in the slot, on the next slot, on the pivot, and a dab on each flat section of our square. Like so. And then we can press in. Check our function. Yes. Yes. Oh, we need to lubricate. Our spring there. Just there too. And then our spring action feels good. Okay, let's lubricate the post for our intermediate minute wheel, intermediate minute pinion, I guess it's called. Uh, intermediate wheel, I would generally call it. Minute wheel, setting wheel, no, that'll do. Let's call it a setting wheel. My way up. Excuse me. Apologies for that. And our setting wheel. Now we can put our small bridge that goes on here to keep everything in place. Now this we use a flat screw and a sunken head screw. We put our sunken screw in there and our flat screw in there like so now there's no steady pin here so screw them down both loose just before and then help them find their own kind of section and then screw them both down together and we can check, and we should have nice resistance for our cannon pinion. We don't want too much resistance, we don't want too little resistance so that it slips, we just want the right amount, and that is the right amount. Okay, let's fit our calendar wheels. Intermediate pinion. Calendar wheel. Uh. 
There we go. And we fit our cheap, crappy plastic part that the jeweler didn't like. We fit that one in. Just ridiculous. Makes me so irritated. And then we can fit our, sc our screw. Sorry, I've just got to make sure everything's seated right. Jumped out of place. And now we can fit our owl wheel. Sorry, I'm just going to have to do this off camera because I've just got something binding here. And when things bind, it doesn't end well. Robs the watch of amplitude, and then the watch obviously stops. There we go. Fit our intermediate pinion, and we fit our, our wheel in place. Now we can check for function. Everything moves together as it should. Now we get our jumper and our corrector. So here is our jumper, we can fit that. Just lubricate. Yeah, we should. And then we can fit our jumper too. Well, we fitted our jumper, and now we can fit it. Uh, fit and lubricate the corrector. Our corrector goes in here like so. You can see the corrector piece. When we push a small amount, what it'll do is it'll advance the date with the back of it there. But when we push deep, it'll advance the day with the front. That's the beauty of this, uh, this whole system. It really is a very uh, clever design. Um, it really is a great, great design. So what we'll do is we'll now fit our calendar disc. And I like to lubricate the calendar disc. I lubricate four teeth. As opposed to the jumper. Calendars do not need a lot of lubrication. You don't want too little, and you definitely don't want too much. So we move our jumper into place. And cover. Take our screws, line them up, and 
Yeah, we jumped out of place. Line them up and we can screw our screws in. Again, screw them in loosely and make sure this little corrector likes to get stuck underneath there. So we wanna make sure that that corrector is out of the way and not getting jammed up. So we can loosely do our screws. Loosely, loosely, and check. And then we wanna push around our date to uh, advance all that lubricant around to make sure that it gets on every teeth, every tooth, so it'll spread to the from the teeth to the jumper, and then it will push the lubricant around. At this point, we can tighten up those screws. Just like that. Check our functions. Make sure our date advances, and it does. So now we can put our day on. Just like to very lightly lubricate a couple of spots on our teeth here. You can lubricate the beaks of the jumpers as well if you prefer. But I've always found it's better to lubricate the wheel itself, the jumper itself. We lightly place it on and we use our oiler to, actually I'm going to use my tweezers. to bring it out of the way. And then we fit a clip like that. Check that we jump. Perfect. Now what we can do make sure the watch is fully wound and we can check our amplitude and timing. Okay, so we can check. We've got a beat error of 0.2 plus four seconds a day, and we've got an amplitude of around 224. This is good, this is freshly serviced, so uh, it's gonna probably settle in around 220 right now, and then once it's um, sat for a day or so, uh, we're gonna see that that amplitude uh, is, is gonna climb up nicely to around 230, um, which is which is really where we want it. 230 is a great amplitude for these um, and should be very happy. So it's kind of settling in around 220 uh, at the moment. So um, we'll now have a look and make sure that the uh, automatic work um, is behaving as it should. Um, so we'll check that now. So now we're gonna fit the automatic work in place. Uh, I've pre-lubricated this wheel so that we can just put that in. Um, and now we have uh, our plate that we put in place, our metal plate, which is almost like a little shim um, in there. We can see previous wear um, there. Now we wanna get our um, automatic block or bridge and we want to lubricate this in various spots we need to lubricate the bottom of our pivot there and we want to put that in place on there we don't want to lubricate the top of the pivot because if you lubricate the top of the pivot it could rub 
and we don't want to get extra lubricant in um, in there where it's not needed. Uh, we also need to lubricate the tops of our pole and in various spots. Now what we can do is we can fit this to our bridge like so. And move the beaks of our pole into place. Check. And wind. And now, we can fit our screws. Like so. We can wind again. Lubricate the teeth into sections. And lubricate our ball bearings. In a couple of spots. Then, we can fit our oscillating weight axle, like so. Check our shakes. And there we have it. A completed Seiko 6139 uh, B chronograph movement. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, please subscribe to the channel so that way you can find out when new videos come out. Uh, you can check out my website, ashtontracy.ca, and you can also check out my Instagram, uh, ashtontracyhorologist. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.